Hi everybody, I'm Kathy Appelt. I am class of 79 and um, I have spent my career writing stories for kids. And um, so this one is for all you little Aggies out there and little Aggie friends. It's called When Otis Courted Mama. It's based on my own life. When I was growing up, my parents got divorced and um, that was hard. That was hard for my sisters and I. Um, and then my mother remarried both actually both of my parents remarried, but um, But my stepfather was just a great great storyteller. And so I wanted to write a story that was um, Really in honor of my stepfather George his name was George in in this story the stepfather's name is Otis But we'll we'll see what happens. Okay, so here we go. So and and the art is by Jill McElmurray Okay, so here we go. When Otis Courted Mama. Before Otis, Cardell had a mostly wonderful life. He had a perfectly good mama and a perfectly good daddy. Both his perfectly good mama and his perfectly good daddy adored him. And Cardell adored them too, with good reason. Cardell's perfectly good daddy made the most fantastic jalapeno flapjacks with just the right amount of saguaro syrup. He was the master of playing zig the zag across the hot burning sand without leaving a single paw print. Best of all, when his perfectly good daddy howled, the stars shimmered and the moon beamed. Cardell felt loved through and through. The only problem was that Cardell's perfectly good daddy lived in a different part of the desert. Cardell had to share him with his perfectly nice stepmama, Lulu, and his perfectly cute stepbrother, little Frankie. But Cardell was mostly used to it. Besides, he only stayed there part of the time. The rest of the time he lived on the other side of the desert where he had his perfectly good mama all to himself. Cardell's mama was a champion scout. She knew how to hunt down pack rats and chuckwallas. Even the sneakiest rattlesnakes couldn't hide from her. Cardell's tummy was always full. She was also a master artist. She painted the most beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Everyone agreed her paintings were something to see. Best of all, when his perfectly good mama smiled, the moon, the stars, even the planets glowed. Cardell felt warm and safe. Yep, apart from a few sticker burrs and occasional sand fleas, Cardell's life was mostly wonderful. But all of that was before Otis, their new neighbor, showed up at their door. Otis came by their den just as the sun was setting, holding a handful of Okatia flowers in one paw and a bag full of cactus candies in the other. Cardell felt a grrr form in his throat, but Mama seemed delighted. Hmm. Otis wasn't the first coyote to come courting Cardell's Mama. First, there had been Cleburne, who was quite a dancer. He and Mama danced all over the mesa, but the more Cleburne danced, the more he slobbered. We can do without Cleburne, agreed Mama. Then there was Pierre, who played the accordion so sweetly that even the scorpion swooned. But talk about conceited, Cardell got tired of hearing Pierre talk about Pierre. Me too, said Mama. Finally, there was Professor Coot. He was quite distinguished, but he was the expert on everything. The flowers, the rocks, the planets, even the sticker burrs and sand fleas. Professor Coot was constantly correcting Cardell. Enough, cried Mama. But now, 
here was Otis. Otis wasn't at all like Cleaver and Pierre or Professor Coop, but he also wasn't like Cardell's perfectly good daddy. Otis couldn't make jalapeno flapjacks worth beans. When he played Zig the Zag, he left paw prints all over the hot burning sand, and his howl sounded like he had rocks in the back of his throat. Cardell expected his mama to say, we can do without Otis. He waited and waited and waited. But adios Otis never came. So Cardell went on alert. His fur bristled. His ears lay back. His grrr got louder. He put Otis on notice. A lesser coyote might have given up, but not Otis. He knew that Cardell was one tough little hombre. So first, he stirred up a batch of prickly pear pudding. Cardell took a bite. His taste buds hummed. Yum. It also turned out that Otis was a terrific pouncer. He pounced straight up into the air as if he had springs in his legs. Then he came back down fast as a shooting star. Cardell had to admit, he was somewhat impressed. Nevertheless, Cardell kept expecting his mama to say, adios, Otis. But when those words went unspoken, Cardell's grrr stayed put. Then one evening, Otis told Cardell and Mama the funniest stories. Stories about horned toads and chaparrales and little coyotes with big gurs. Cardell couldn't help it. He howled with laughter. Those stories settled on Cardell's fur like a warm blanket. Even the moon seemed to smile. Before Otis left that night, he grabbed Cardell's paw and shook it. Coyote to coyote. Cardell's grrr got softer and softer and softer until it disappeared altogether. A few moons later, Otis asked Mama to marry him. Cardell and Otis waited and waited and waited. The sun rose, the sun set, the stars shimmered in the desert sky. Finally, all of the planets lined up just right. Then, yes, Mama said at last. She smiled the biggest smile Cardell had ever seen. He looked at Otis, whose grin was just as wide. Then Mama and Otis both looked at Cardell, and he smiled right along with them. After Otis, Cardell still had a perfectly good daddy and a perfectly good mama, a perfectly nice stepmama, and a perfectly cute stepbrother. But now, Cardell also had someone else, Otis. And life, sticker burrs and sand fleas aside, it was mostly wonderful. So there you go. The end.